that in line. Control, we passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our plane liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission, and this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The test supervisor are now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager Paul Donner reports go for launch. Launch director Rocco Patron now gives a go for five minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tele telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T-minus four minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm are now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute 30 second mark in the countdown. Still go at this time. minutes 15 seconds the test supervisor now is informed launch vehicle test conductor norm carlson you are go, go for launch from this time down uh carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh begins to build up we're now hitting the four minute mark four minutes mark four minutes and counting we are go for apollo 11. we'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds minutes 45 seconds and counting and the final uh, abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed three minutes 25 seconds and counting we'll still go at this time we'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about uh, 10 or 15 seconds from this time all still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. We are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned, and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Two minutes, ten seconds, and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff, will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We're just past the two-minute mark in the countdown. T-minus one minute, 54 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T-minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80 second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50 second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60 second mark on 
of the Apollo 11 mission. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T-minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading.
11 Houston, you are go at four minutes. Gotcha. Eleven, this is Houston. You are go for staging. Over. Understand. Go for staging. Stand by for mode four capability. To mode four. Mark mode four capability. Mode four and Apollo eleven could get into orbit using the service propulsion system now. Altitude is one hundred miles. Downrange eight hundred eighty-three miles. Outboard engine cutoff. And ignition. Again, right on time. Ignition confirmed. Thrust is go. Eleven. And now the and third stage. We have a stage good third stage them. now. It stays with them for some time yet. Velocity 23,128 feet per second. Downrange 1,000 miles. Altitude 101 miles. This is Houston. At 10 minutes, you are go. All right, Roger. Let's go. Capcom Bruce McCandless giving the reports here from the control center. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Predicted cutoff at 11 plus 42. Over. 1142, Rich. 11 minutes and 42 seconds into the flight from the third stage. Downrange 1,175 miles. Velocity 24,190 miles feet per second. Altitude 102 nautical miles. Apollo 11 still go on all sources. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at 11. There you go. <clears throat> We're predicting third stage shutdown at 11 minutes, 42 seconds. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. This is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. Well, they, in fact, are in orbit. And this is mission control in Houston. Sir. This is Houston. The booster is safe. All right, sir. Show velocity at insertion 25,568 feet per second. see on our map at the NBC News Space Center about where they are located, the flashing lights out over the Atlantic Ocean. They are in orbit, almost exactly what they had in mind. They wanted a circular orbit of about 101 nautical miles. The orbit is 101.4 by 103.6. And they got the speed they wanted, 25,568 feet per second about 17,500 miles an hour. 
All of it routine so far, routine appearing, yet we all realize that this is the beginning of the most audacious undertaking that man has ever attempted. We'll be back in just a moment. After the stage is fired, the astronauts will then be inserted into an Earth parking orbit. The guidance system has already computed the trajectory needed to intercept the moon. The confirmation of that trajectory or course will be relayed by Houston to the astronauts. Two hours and 40 minutes after launch over the Pacific, the third stage engine will be restarted, and when an escape velocity of nearly 25,000 miles per hour is reached, Apollo 11 will be injected into a translunar trajectory. Soon after, the panels of the spacecraft's lunar module adapter are jettisoned. The Apollo command and service module then separates from the booster. The astronauts start the docking maneuver, rotating Apollo 180 degrees, and then, using their small thruster rockets, dock with the LEM. The third stage will be jettisoned when the docking maneuver is completed about two hours after translunar injection. The astronauts, using star sightings backed up by mission control, guidance radar, and computers, then work up the data to make mid-course corrections and set their course to intercept the moon three days later. Depending on how accurate the rocket engine burns to get away from Earth, none or as many as three mid-course corrections may be needed. Apollo's speed decreases from 25,000 to less than 4,000 miles per hour en route. Then, near the moon as lunar gravity begins to exert its influence, the speed of the spacecraft increases up to 6,000 miles per hour. Apollo 11 is in a free return trajectory, which will carry it around the moon and back to Earth for recovery if problems have developed. But if all has gone well, Apollo 11's onboard service module engine will be fired, and the spacecraft will be placed into lunar orbit. Because of the danger of mechanical failure, all of the systems can be overridden by the astronauts if the automatic systems aren't working perfectly. 81 hours into the flight, Armstrong and Aldrin transfer into the lunar module for the second time, completing their checkout of the lunar landing spacecraft. They remove the docking probe and drogue from the tunnel connecting the command and lunar modules and equalize the pressure in both vehicles. The lunar module pilot then floats through the docking tunnel overhead and into the LEM. One of the first tasks for the lunar module pilot is to activate the LEM's environmental control system and to change his suit connections to the LEM's umbilicals. 